I wanted to give you a little bit of background information about how I got involved with this whole process and how we got from there to here. Um, I was a family doctor in Michigan. I moved to North Carolina and I started working uh, to build an office I would, to pay the bills. I started moonlighting in the ER. And what I found was that I liked emergency medicine and like a lot of people um, had done at that time, I switched over, switched careers. And I worked in a small community hospital and uh, learned how to be an ER doc. And uh, after a while, I, like most of the people I work with, was very comfortable when adults came in. But when children came in, we all got very nervous. It was chaotic. And we never felt like we did a good job. Uh, I didn't feel like I did a good job. The nurses, the pharmacists, and uh, the paramedics. I mean, you couldn't do a good job. It was horribly complicated. Everything was weight-based weight dosing, and you didn't even have a weight. You had formulas of drugs you hardly ever used. They had confusing names, similar doses. And, um, and so uh, I felt like you needed more of, a, of an aid, of a crutch of some sort. And I came up with the idea of the tape. And uh, the Braslow tape, as it's been called, uh, my wife's idea was to call it the Braslow tape, which I think was a good idea, uh, is a device that allows you to measure a child and actually not measure their length, but get their dose. And so once we had the relationship with how long children were and how much medicine they needed, we developed a system. And so when you measured the child, you got the dose in milligrams of every drug you needed. And then we looked at equipment and we realized it wasn't just medicine you needed, but you needed equipment. And so it seemed to us that how long a child was, their length should relate to the right size for their different airway tubes, et cetera. And over a number of years, we showed that length was the best determinant of that also. And the system got busy, and we decided to color code it for simplicity. And so this is the system now that you're seeing that we developed. And uh, it has a color-coded system, and the tape is color-coded. So you measure a child, you get a color. And that color uh, kind of indexes your system. Uh, in this example, you can see I could pick up the purple bag and had all the right equipment, or I could go to the purple drawer. This system is now standard of care in most of the hospitals in the United States. But what we realized along the way was we had standardized a difficult part of medicine, at least to the extent that there was a process that took into account the various needs of different sized children. And uh, we had accomplished something that we were proud of that we thought that would really help care. But we also started looking at systems and how systems were not well designed. And you know, it's okay if you only have one med or two or five or 10 or 100 like when my dad used to practice. But now we have thousands, even hundreds of thousands of choices. And so you need a more systematic approach. And so we decided to take the concepts of the tape and the color coding organizer and see if we could extend this to uh, medication safety. This is a series of uh, newspaper reports it's, it's discomforting to look at, but this is actually what's happened in the United States, and unfortunately after our system was developed, not before. And as you look at these headlines, you realize that we still make way too many mistakes, and especially with children that are so vulnerable. And so uh, we decided to look at the whole process of medication safety, and not just in emergencies, not just in cardiac arrest. And so uh, we looked at the basic process of giving a medicine. And we didn't look at it just from the point of view of children, even adults. But without going into this slide, you can see there's a huge amount of information that you need, the whole safety process. And you realize if this were done by people independently doing their own math and calculations under every circumstance, writing on bed sheets, under stress, that there's no way that you can get this process correct every single time because you're dealing with humans. And uh, here's another example. This may surprise you, especially if you're not a physician or nurse, uh, but this is standard of care. If you went into our best hospitals and you had an acute emergency with yourself or your children, people would be doing the math like this on a bed sheet. It's scary, is that right? Is it the right equation? Do they have the right thing in the numerator? Did they do the math right? You say, well, how about a calculator? I hate calculators. I mean, I like them because I hate long division. But every time I do something, maybe I'm in a hurry, but I go to do my checkbook and I push total and I get zero and I know that's not right. 
I was adding, I was subtracting. Oh gee, I didn't cancel the entry before. So the use of a calculator itself can introduce just common everyday errors. So when we talk about removing the math from medicine, yeah, that's our goal. We want to remove the math from medicine, and that's our goal with Artemis. We're talking about the whole process. How do you set up the equation? What is the difference in the equation with the neonate, a newborn that needs a certain medicine versus an adult person? How much fluids can they have? Is it diluted? How fast do you give it? And so this is a really daunting process. In fact, I'm not sure we would have done it if we knew how complicated it was going to be. But we started out about 10, 12 years ago with just cardiac arrests and then antibiotics and then other medicines. And all of a sudden we looked that we had standardized the whole process of medication information. And so uh, that was our goal. We make people make mistakes. What do I mean by that? Well, sometimes I'll be giving this talk to some nurses. We've all been around a long time, and the nurse will say, well, I think I'm just old-fashioned, but I think people should do math. They should learn math. Why? Because maybe they won't have your system, and they'll have to do the math. Sounds logical. But what you're really saying is, let me get this straight. You want to make sure that I make mistakes every single day so that theoretically someday I won't make a mistake? Doesn't make any sense. I know how to add. I know how to do long division. But it doesn't do me any good to do it a thousand times. I still screw it up. In other words, that's the human factor. So what we want is, yeah, you should know how to do it, but then we shouldn't make you do it. We should limit your exposure to it. There's a, there's a book on uh, engineering, and they talk about math errors. Here's uh, by uh, Park, uh, is the name of the author. Normal conditions, 3% errors. Second check, 10% errors. What do you mean by that? Well, if I get you to check my math, you'll probably think, well, he's smarter than I am. I think he's right. People don't like to take the responsibility for the process. So the second check doesn't really do a second check. And under stress, their study, 25%, we have error studies. So the idea of making people do math under stress is it, just not worth it. Here's, here are labels of vials. Here's a bunch of vials with the labels. These are just how they come. When you do math, you have to get the right number in your numerator, your denominator. You're reading a vial, you're getting older. You have bifocals or trifocals. It says one says three milligram for two mil, but for your calculation, you have to make sure you get the one milligram for one mil. You don't want to confuse the fact that it says two grams, but it's not per milliliter, it's in the whole vial. These numbers, the way it's set up, the visuals, they are all part of the process and they're all very error prone. Our language is horribly confusing. We don't talk in words. If I wanted to talk in words, I'd say, go in the other room or make me dinner. But in medicine, we don't do that. We talk in numbers. Uh, the patient's on three micrograms. Well, actually, we mean three micrograms per kilogram of weight. And we give it three micrograms per kilogram per weight, but you have to set the pump for mils per hour. And this product is not labeled milligrams, it's labeled in one to 10,000 dilution, and then you have to know how many milligrams or micrograms. The language is ridiculous. We don't recognize mistakes. Uh, this is an example of a tenfold error in an adult. You saw in the earlier slides about the tenfold errors. It's pretty hard to make a tenfold error in an adult because these meds mostly are, are, are set up for adults. You have an amp, you open the box, you take the amp out, and you give it, and that's the adult dose. So if I was making a mistake in ordering 10 amps, anybody in the room would know, certainly by the third or fourth or fifth box they open, that this doesn't sound right. This might be a tenfold error. But the scary part in the kid is that's the same tenfold error in the same syringe. So you see with the numbers, the poor communication, the chaos, the anxiety, and the lack of visual feedback, it's so easy to make a mistake. This is, this is uh, an example that I, that I really like. We've spent a lot of money, and I think it's a good idea to have computer order entry for physicians. What it does is the computer kind of filters the doctor's order to make sure that it's appropriate. 
So uh, those of you that are medical will kind of understand this. Uh, if I were using computer order entry the way it's set up in a hospital, but I was using it in an Italian restaurant, and I order to the chef that I want lasagna, uh, and I did it with computer order entry, he would see, oh, I can read Dr. Broslow's writing, that's good. He's not allergic to cheese. He's not on two veal dishes. And it is dinner time, it's the right time. So I think I'll make it. So that's computer order entry, it checked that. But the problem is, somebody has to make the lasagna. There's the lasagna, there's our nurse, but don't worry, we always get it right. What do I mean by that? We don't keep track of the recipe. Imagine you just got married, you have your young wife there, she's learning how to cook. And you say, what am I having for dinner? She says, lasagna. You eat it and you say, that doesn't taste like lasagna. So at least you know. <laughs> But how about if they're making a complex drip of an infusion that can save a kid's life? And, and the chart says that what you ordered is what we gave. We don't know that it is. And so it's the process that is the issue. And the process is totally dependent on error producing mechanism. It's, we all know it, we would never allow people to do math if something important was at stake. Putting this together, Atoll Gawande, and you'll wonder where I'm coming from on this, he wrote a wonderful book called The Checklist Manifesto. And what he showed was that the addition of a simple checklist in the operating room could greatly improve the outcome of operations and reduce errors. We wondered if we could have a checklist with medication administration and so ultimately we decided that we could take the process information and tether it to the drug. So think about this. When lives are on the line, we do math. When money's on the line, we barcode. 